You getting a level? Everybody focus! Hey. And welcome into the Rowdy Studios. It's time for the pre-race show. For Pocono. Absolutely. The good Sam 500 is the name of the race. It was a little too rehearsed that time. I thought you did a good job. Okay. Uh, what are the keys to Pocono? Triangular track. It's two and a half miles long. Indy was two and a half miles long like last week. And the corners are flat like Indy, but it looks totally different. It's a big triangle. It is a big triangle. It's unlike any other place we go. And there are lots of keys to this. Lots of keys. Lots of keys. One of the newer keys, or the keys that's come back is the idea of shifting, which was reinstated in the uh, last race at Pocono. Let's listen to Carl Edwards talk a little bit about shifting. I think Tony Stewart was a great example of you know, a guy that was blistering fast and just um, you know, had, had ended up having trouble. And he was shifting in all three corners uh, from what I could see. So do you, do you go there and you do your shift? And do you, do you do what Tony did? Do you just say, hey, I'm going for it. We're going to go as fast as we can. Or do you save your car for the end? I guess, Bass, it's just one more variable, one right. more thing that can go wrong. Either the equipment can fail or a driver can wear it out or a driver can just make a mistake. So I guess it's just one added wrinkle. Well, you think about it, Pocono is such an unusual racetrack. It is a triangle. You've got a very long front stretch, longest uh, straight patch of asphalt in NASCAR. Then you've got a pretty tight turn one. It's got the most degrees of banking of any turn on the track, but it's still fairly flat. Then you got another huge straightaway of the long pond straight. Then you get into turn two, which is probably the trickiest turn on the course. Then you come down a short chute and you hit turn three, which is a long sweeping turn. And I think turn three to me is the key to this racetrack because once you leave turn three, you're getting back onto that long front stretch. And at that point, that's where you can make passes. So if you can get through turn three in good shape and get back to the gas early, to get down the front stretch, that's where you can really make passes at Pocono. And of course, getting down that really long front stretch means you're carrying a lot of speed you into are. turn one. And so one of the other keys to this racetrack is how you use your brakes. I mean, brakes have a lot more endurance now than they did years ago, so it's not as much of an issue as it once was, but it's still something that you as a driver you have to, to be... Tell that to Brad Keselowski. <laughs> right, it's still something you as a driver have to be conscious of. And here's Kevin Harvick talking about that very thing. Yeah, when you get to the end of the straightaway, you're toting the mail pretty well. In a race, you're actually trying to conserve the brakes in, in the first part of the race. And, and really, if you overdrive the corner, uh, it really screws the whole corner up uh, in turn one anyway. So, And there's another aspect that we have to be well aware of this week after last week's race, and that's fuel mileage. Uh, this Pocono race can be a fuel mileage race. And certainly at two and a half miles long, you're going to see the same sort of strategy, I think, that you saw at Indy, which is you can come in and make a pit stop under green without going a lap down. So what that means is you can pit, whether it's green or yellow, right when you hit that fuel window at the end of the like race. Like a road course. Like a road course. You want to get in there early and get your pit stop done so that your last run to the finish, you've got the best track position you can possibly have. So I think we're going to see that at Pocono. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson talks about that very thing, the fuel mileage balance, the fuel mileage gamble. I think first thing that comes to mind is fuel mileage. And it's, it's uh, one or the other. You either have a really fast car and poor fuel mileage <laughs> or not running so good and roll the dice and stay out and, and uh, save some fuel and, and take those two strategies. So uh, I would much rather have the better driving race car and hope that it's just a fight to the finish. And what Jimmy's saying there is basically the faster you run, generally the more fuel you burn. But I think fuel mileage is going to be an issue here. Even if it doesn't come down to a pure fuel mileage race, how far you can stretch it is going to determine where you can pit. I understand Jimmy wanting to have a better car that may be a little worse on fuel mileage, but I'm not sure anymore in this day and age, you. man. It's, it's track position, and we know track position is going to be important here. You're going to want to stay out in clean air if you can. But Pocono so is a place you can pass. You can pass if you get through three in good shape. You've got plenty of room and plenty of time on the front stretch, and I think that's where you want to make your pass. And again, like Indy, horsepower can show up there. So if you've got a good engine that's a little bit better than some other guy, that'll show up on the straights at Pocono. All right, Bass, who do you like at this race? I think it's Denny Hamlin. I think it's Denny Hamlin's track. Although you got to look at Carl Edwards with a positive boost after re-signing with Roush this week. I still like Denny Hamlin at Pocono. I like Jeff Gordon to sweep. I mean, he won this race earlier in the season. Look how strong he was at Indianapolis. Yes. One of the, if not the strongest car on the track. I think uh, old uh, he's going to. He just celebrated his 40th birthday. I think four time might uh, might sweep Pocono this season. He's a youngster. Is that what you're telling me? He's younger than me. He's younger than me by a significant amount. All right. For Buzz Cutler, I'm Bass Masters. That's our take on Pocono. We will be back on Monday to tell you exactly what happened. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is.
Say what like it is. Property.com. 